so much for joining me to do some yoga this morning. First of all, happy 1st of May or May day. I hope you will get outside to enjoy a little bit of this morning sunshine this morning. It's so beautiful out there. Um, I'm going to be doing a gently building energy boosting class this morning. So we'll be doing gradually a little more and a little more with our motions to get our energy from maybe a level of being a little lower to a level of being a little higher, a little more full, a little more ready to face our days. There are no props required for this class. If you like to use blocks as you fold forward, you are more than welcome to grab a couple of blocks, stack of books, you know, whatever you have at home, um, but you don't have to have absolutely anything for this class. The yoga mat, of course, is always nice to keep your feet from slipping, but even that is not a requirement. You can be on the floor or on a carpet as well. When you are ready to get started, go ahead and come to stand, and we're going to be facing, again, uh, more the long edge of our mat today. We'll rotate to face to the left and rotate to face to the right, but we're going to start and move from the center point of the mat. So as you get ready, you're gonna set yourself up right in the middle of your mat, facing a long edge of your mat, and you'll probably wanna be facing in a direction that you can see me because we'll be facing this direction most of the time. Relax your shoulders away from your ears. And as you get settled in, spread your toes nice and wide. your knees a little bit and just get yourself into a comfortable standing position here. That means sometimes your toes like to do a little bit different than you might think that they're supposed to do. Turn out or turn in. You might like to stand a little wider as long as you feel strong and stable. That's all we're looking for here. And when you feel strong and stable in your standing position, go ahead and close your eyes if you can or focus your gaze at a point on the floor in front of you. And just quickly check in with your body. Notice what's happening in the space around your eyes. Is it crunched up, squished, or is it soft and easy? Notice what's happening the same in your jaw. Is it mobile? Is it relaxed? The back of your neck. And it's totally fine as you notice these things to move around a little bit if they are not feeling nice and relaxed, these areas that we're mentioning. How do your shoulders feel? Your arms, palms of your hands. How does your belly feel, your hips, your thighs, your knees, your calves, and the soles of your feet. And to the best of your ability, you're trying to relax your body a little bit here in this standing position, but it's okay if you notice that there are areas that are tight and tense. Those are just little cues for you. Maybe those are areas of your body that you give a little bit of extra attention to today, a little extra kindness. Now that you've checked in a little bit with your body, take a deep breath in. And a big sigh out. Blink your eyes open or raise your gaze up, bring your arms over your head. Interlace your fingers, turn the palms up, and again, just reach up as you inhale, stretching through the sides of your body, through your armpits. As you exhale, lean to one side. It doesn't matter which way you go. As you inhale, come back to the center. And as you exhale, lean the other way. Inhale, come back to center. As you exhale, bring your hands down about halfway so your arms are parallel to the floor and just start to draw some little circles with your hands towards the back of the room. That might feel 
feel okay in your shoulders, but you might vary the size of the circle. Maybe your circles like to be a little bigger, or maybe your circle would like to be really big. And we're gonna circle here for a few moments. So you can kind of experiment. Sometimes it feels better for one arm to circle and then the other almost like you're doing a backstroke. And you might alternate the size of your circles. What you just wanna feel here is that you're getting a little bit of heat into your shoulders. Feel maybe kind of some little clinky clonkies as you start to warm up, especially if this is the first movement you've done today. So be gentle with yourself. It's not about how big your circles are, how fast. Just you feel your shoulders. You feel your arms starting to get a little warm, maybe a pleasant fatigue about them. You can bend your elbows if you want. It's totally fine to mix this up whenever you need to. As you're ready, just switch and circle now towards the front of the room. And your arms might already be a little tired, or you might have to circle quite a bit to feel that sense of fatigue. You're welcome to stop whenever you need to. If you feel like your arms are quite pleasantly tired, that's the point that you want to stop at. Remember, this is a gentle buildup, so you don't need to max out here at the beginning. You can sort of start slow and we'll add a little more a little more and a little more. Maybe move for a few more breaths. And then you're gonna slowly let your arms just come down by your sides. They might swing for a few breaths as you just let all of that momentum dissipate. And then on an inhale, bring your arms back up over your head, press the palms of your hands together and fold all the way forward. Inhale, press your hands onto your thighs, find halfway lift or onto your shins. And then as you exhale, fold forward. Make sure your feet are a distance apart that feels stable to you as you enter into this forward fold. And take a few breaths here, maybe move around a little bit. You wanna feel like to do this next exercise that you have a little bit of space in your hips, so feel free to move them from side to side or to bend and straighten your legs a few times, sway your torso. You'll wanna have enough space in your shoulders. I'm gonna do what is called a standing cobra roll. So as you're ready, you're gonna walk your fingertips over to one side. And it doesn't matter which side you go to, I'm going over to the outside of my left foot, but that's just totally arbitrary. And then soften your knees here. Make sure that your knees feel supported and safe and then with your head heavy, just like a rag doll, but a little bit over to you one side, you're gonna roll all the way up. And as you reach that point where you're coming to standing, you're gonna kind of roll a little back, roll your shoulders back. You can even lean a little bit to the back of the mat and then roll over to the opposite side, letting your arms kind of just flop around with you. Keep your knees soft, keep your head soft. Inhale, roll up the second side. You can roll a little back. You can even look towards the ceiling if you feel quite stable here and then roll down the other side. And as you do this, you just wanna make sure this feels okay, again, in your knees, but also your lower back, if it's twingy there, maybe you don't roll back, you just roll over to the side and then down. Customize, range of motion is totally up to you. You can be a lot more towards the center line than I am, I'm going pretty far over to the side. And the range of motion and the pace are totally up to you. It's more important that this feels pleasantly opening in your body and if that's the case you do one then you do ten and they feel icky and uncomfortable and compressive. If it feels good you can do one more. Then you're just gonna come all the way back up to the center line, you roll your shoulders back, then you roll them forward as you come up to standing, inhale, bring your arms overhead. As you exhale again, press your palms together, fold forward, and spend a bit of time here again in this forward fold. You can always be using props underneath your hands to make yourself a little taller if you want. You can be moving, or you can be completely still. At this point, maybe you feel ready to take your hands into the opposite elbow crease and add a little more traction to this forward fold. You can feel your spine gently elongating 
Feel the back of your legs starting to become alive. And take another deep breath. And then release your fingertips to the floor or your hands onto a prop. Lift up about halfway and then heel toe your feet out wide. Wider than the distance of your own hips for Prasarita Padasanasana or wide legged forward fold. And you can stay quite high up here. This is quite a lot of work in your inner thighs and your hamstrings. Squeeze the arches of your feet towards the central line of the mat so you feel your inner thighs. If you want here, you can fold more forward if you feel ready in your legs. And again, there is no need to be perfectly still here unless that is what feels good. You can always be moving down or even here side to side a little bend another deep breath here and then coming back to the center line press your fingertips down lift up about halfway Place your left hand underneath your nose and twist over to your right. You can bring your right hand to your hip or you can bring your right arm up to the sky. Shrug your shoulders back. Remember, underneath your left hand, there could always be a prop if the floor feels far away. And it's completely fine here if your left hip is quite a bit lower than your right hip and you feel your left inner thigh quite a bit. When you're ready, you fold back to the floor and you're just going to go the other way. Right hand down, left hand can come to the hip or all the way up to the sky if you feel ready. And let the hips just go along with this motion. You don't need to lock them up today. When you're ready, fold back down towards the floor. Inhale, find a halfway lift, so a little bit higher. Think of your spine maybe being about parallel to the floor. And then exhale, maybe you go a little deeper into your forward fold. Inhale, find a halfway lift. And then here, using the stability of your fingertips on the floor, your hands to the blocks, heel toe your feet in, maybe once or twice. Toes are going to be out, heels are going to be in, and you're going to come into a squat, dropping your buns back and walking your hands up onto your thighs. As you come to your squat, take a moment and assess where your feet need to be so that your knees are tracking over the center three toes of the foot so the knees are not leaning in or leaning out. You'll feel a lot of either inner thigh or outer thigh work if you do that, but the knees are going over the toes. So you could be sumo wrestler or you could be ballerina, but a comfortable space to hold this squat for a few breaths. Relax your shoulders away from your ears as you inhale. And as you exhale, sink a little deeper into this. Let your hands come onto your thighs. Inhale, you're going to dip your left shoulder towards your right knee, finding a little bit of a twist. And then inhale back to center. And exhale, go the other way. And you're just kind of dipping shoulder towards the knee. Make sure that your knees stay tracking over your toes as you do this, or if you need to adjust your feet, don't hesitate. One more on each side. Creating some space, a little bit of work in your spine. Come back to the center line. Press your hands into your thighs, lift the shoulders up. Maybe you can hold here for three deep breaths. Maybe you need to straighten your legs. See how it goes. If you feel frisky, you can bring your hands in front of your heart. See if you can wiggle your toes here. They're not death gripping the mat. Just remember to breathe, but only one more breath here. And then press into the heels of your feet, straighten your legs, turn your toes to face towards the long edge of your mat, and then heel toe a couple of times in so the feet are comfortable distance apart. I'm actually going to start this morning with a balance pose before our muscles are too tired. If you'd like to step to a wall, please don't hesitate to do so. We're going to take what I call feathered rooster pose, which is kind of a hybridized figure four pose. So I like to practice about eight to 10 inches away from the wall so that as I sit back, I can put my hands on the wall. Feet a comfortable distance apart. Relax your shoulders. Bring 
bring your weight to your right foot. You can lift all of your toes on that right foot and then think about putting down the big toe maybe by itself. If that was successful, then the little toe can go by itself. And if those other toes are lifted, you can drop them down. You should feel a lot of energy in the arch of your foot, in your kneecap and in your thigh. Lift your left heel up. Tuck your right hip in. And then maybe you can lift your left knee and cross your left ankle over the top of your right leg. Maybe you wobble. Relax your left knee. If that feels good from the crease of your hips, sit a little back is where the wall is really handy. You could put your hands on it. This is your figure four pose. You're just starting to stretch out your hips a little bit. It's completely fine if your ankle doesn't make it over your knee and you stay standing with your ankle over your calf or even in a little tree pose, ankle against the, uh, or yeah, it's actually, so the foot against the ankle is what I'm trying to say, as opposed to ankle over the knee or the calf. Now, if you've leaned a little back and you feel quite stable, you might add your feathers, reaching your arms back behind you. Again, a nice opportunity to touch something strong. And you want to spread your fingers wide here and widen your collarbones as you reach back and out diagonally. Lift your belly button a little bit and imagine roosterness. You are cocky. You can strut your stuff here. So you want to keep lifting your chest as you sit your buttons back. Try another breath or two here if it's feeling good. And then you can release. Go ahead and shake out the right leg, shake out the left leg. Maybe now you feel a little bit warmer and you're ready to go over to the other side. So you set your feet a comfortable distance apart. Feel like you can lift all of the toes of your right foot as you bring, excuse me, your left foot as you bring your weight over there. Left big toe might go down. No successful little toe can go down. And then all of the other toes can go to the floor. Lift your right heel up. Tuck your left hip in so you're not standing like this, like you're holding a big bag. This hip is integrated. You feel the arch of your foot lifting up. Maybe you can lift your right knee. Cross your right ankle over the top. Let the right knee relax. And sometimes this is plenty, just practicing right here. You can reach your arms out here. You can be touching the wall. You can be practicing here or here. Maybe if you feel strong, you sit a little back and you take your hip crease back. And as you do that again, you're imagining you are that feathered rooster. So you want to keep your chest lifted. I keep your collarbones wide as you sit back and you reach your wings out and give them a little wiggle, a little pull. And then spread your toes wide here, flexing your foot. And remember, balance isn't about perfection. It's not about can you stand here on one foot without moving for a certain period of time. It's we take the time so that we can fall have the opportunity to get back up. And we expect to fall. It's fine. <laughs> we know that we can get back up and try again. And you're ready. You release. And you shake out. And you roll out your arms a little bit like we did earlier. Move your hips around. And we're going to come back into the flow and you know now that balance is done. You don't have to worry about that anymore. It's off the table. Now we're just going to move a little bit more dynamically. So take your feet again a little wider than the distance of your own hips. And here you're going to enter your wide-legged forward fold. So your feet are more or less facing the longish than that, but if they like to be toes a little in or toes a little out, it's just your personal preference of what your body likes. So set yourself up again so it feels comfortable. Inhale, bring your arms overhead. As you exhale, bring your right hand down and your left arm over. Inhale, come back to the center line. And exhale to go the other way. Inhale to the center line, press the palms of your hands together and exhale, fold all the way forward. 
Inhale, press the fingertips down, find halfway lift. And then as you exhale, you're gonna fold more forward, soften your knees a little bit, spend a few breaths here. You're welcome to keep your fingertips on the floor. At this point, you might take your hands behind your back. You could rest them on top of your sacrum, or you can interlace your fingers and draw your arms up to the ceiling. As you're ready, release your hands. Bring your fingertips back to the floor. Press yourself up on an inhale about halfway, and then walk towards your left foot, towards the short edge of your mat over there on the left. Turn your left foot to face towards the short edge of your mat. Turn your right foot to face the short edge of your mat here. Your fingertips are on the floor. You can use props underneath your hands here as you find this lunge position. Shrug your shoulders back, and then drop your hips a little bit towards the floor, but lift your torso. Your left knee is stacking right over your left ankle. You can stay with your fingertips on the floor. You can come a little higher, hands to thigh, or you can even go back to that feathered rooster position, reaching your arms back, lifting your chest a little bit, broadening your collarbones, testing your thigh strength a little bit here on the left side. With another deep breath here, building a little bit more heat. And then we're going to come into a warrior two. So your left hand drops to the outside of your left foot. Your right arm is going to reach forward as your right toes face towards the long edge of the mat. Sweep your right arm up overhead and come windmilling up to your warrior two. Front knee over front ankle. Heel of the front foot roughly in line with the arch of the back foot. See where you feel strong and stable. Turn your gaze forward. And take a deep, full breath here. Again, broaden the collarbones. It's like you're trying to draw your fingertips out to opposite sides of the room. Just like in La Crosse Rita Padmasana, draw your feet towards the center line of the mat as if you're trying to just kind of scrunch up your mat here in the middle so you feel your inner thighs really working. Inhale. Turn your left palm to face the sky and as you exhale, fold to the back of the room. Relax your shoulders. Reversing your warrior. Inhale, come back to the center line. As you exhale, fold your left arm to your left thigh, reach your right arm up, or even a little over your head, extended side angle. Hopefully you're really starting to feel that left leg gaining some heat now. Inhale here. And then as you exhale, you're going to fold the rest of the foot. So take this right hand and just bring it down towards the mat. Turn the right foot to face towards the short edge of the mat. Bring your fingertips to frame your left foot and bring your right knee to the floor. You're in a low lunge position. The right hand plants down. You can use a prop underneath of it and twist to your left, to your front leg. Shoulders drop back. You can take your left arm to the sky if you want. For those of you with tender knees, you can always modify a low lunge as a medium-sized lunge with the knee lifted or place a blanket underneath your knee here. Inhale here. And then as you exhale, fold towards the floor, plant your hands down. You're gonna rock your hips a little back so your right knee is above, excuse me, your right hip is above your right knee and then step your left knee back next to your right knee. Inhale, slide the palms of your hands forward, slide your shoulders over your wrists, diagonal. Exhale, slowly lower yourself to the Press the tops of your feet down, hug your elbows in, inhale, cobra pose, as high as feels comfortable for your body. Exhale to release, tuck your toes under, come on back, table pose, or if you like, you could rise up to a downward facing dog pose. We'll spend about four or five breaths, your choice of where to play. You could pedal your feet in your downward facing dog. You could move your hips around, maybe in a circle, in your table pose. You can feel a little bit like, oh, this is too much and you just want to relax. You could take a child's pose, bringing your forehead to the floor at this point. Honor what is happening in your body, what feels right to you this morning. You're ready, we'll all meet in table or downward facing dog. And from table or downward facing dog, you're gonna float your left foot again to the sky. 
Left foot steps back to the front of the mat. It's working to be in between the hands. Assist if it's necessary. Walk your hands to the inside of your front foot and start to walk towards the long edge of the mat. Right foot turns to face it. Left foot turns to face it. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Spend a deep breath here. Feel free to move. And then with your next inhale, find that halfway lift. As you exhale, walk to the back of the mat. Right foot turns to the short edge. Left foot turns to the short edge. And we start again with this lunge position. Right knee is over the right ankle. Relax your hips a little bit, but keep lifting your belly button and your torso. You can stay with the fingertips on the floor or hands on some kind of prop. Or you can bring your hands up onto your thigh. A little bit more work for that right leg. Or you can bring your arms out behind you like that feathered rooster. Spread your wingtips. Draw the center of your chest a little bit forward here. Keep your belly button engaged. And we build just a little bit of heat in that front leg. Building a little bit more every time. As you're ready. The right hand is going to come to the outside of the right foot. Feel free to use a prop. The left arm sweeps forward as the left foot turns to face the long edge of the mat. You sweep the left arm up and then you windmill yourself up. Feel free to press your right hand into your thigh or walk for support. Warrior two. Right knee over right ankle. Heel to arch. Maybe you turn to look forward over your front fingertips. Relax your shoulders. Right palm turns to the sky on an inhale. And as you exhale, you fold to the back of the mat. It's perfectly fine to look down towards your back toes, to look towards the midline, or to look towards the ceiling. Again, it's what feels good to your body. It feels pleasantly stretchy on this right side of your torso, right hip. Inhale, back to the center line. And as you exhale, fold the right arm to the right thigh. Left arm could reach straight up. Reach a little bit over your head. This is your Utita Parsvakanasana or extended side angle. Inhale here, and as you exhale, this top arm is going to fold down towards the floor. The left foot turns to face the short edge of the mat, and you bring your left knee to the floor. Low lunge position. Left hand stays down, and you twist to your right towards your front knee. Shoulders shrug back. Right arm could come to the sky if that feels nice. And here we think about hugging your right hip, your right thigh towards the center line of your back, giving yourself a little stretch on the outer edge of the leg there. Folding back towards the floor as you're ready, plant your hands down, rock your hips back, right knee next to left knee. Slide your hands forward as you inhale, shoulders over wrists. Exhale to the floor. Inhale, cobra pose. You can always modify by doing sphinx elbows under the shoulders if you prefer. Exhale to release. Your choice of where to go. You could rest in child's pose. You could move in a table or a downward facing dog. You're welcome to repeat that half in yasa sequence if you feel frisky today. Plank, push up to the floor, and back bend, cobra or sphinx, and back to your base, table or downward facing dog. Another breath or so just to play around. And we'll all meet in table or in downward facing dog. From here, float your right foot now to the sky, inhale and step your right foot between your hands. Hands come to the inside of the right foot, left foot turns to the long edge of the mat, right foot turns to the long edge of the mat, you walk your fingertips underneath your nose, and you find your wide-legged forward fold. Relax into it for a deep breath. And then on an inhale, you find that halfway lift. You're gonna walk back to the front, so that's turning the left foot to the short edge, and the right foot to the short edge. We're gonna start exactly the same way. Left knee over left ankle, fingertips to, could stay to the floor, hands could come to the thigh, or arms could reach out behind you. 
Drop your hips a little bit, but lift your torso. Press firmly into your left heel. If you feel really quite strong, you could spread out your wings. I'm run, running into the wall here, but you can reach your arms out to the side. If your core feels strong, this doesn't bother your back, you can even reach your arms out in front of you. Really feeling the heat, the energy building in that left leg. Take another deep breath. And then the left hand comes to the outside of the foot. The right arm is going to sweep overhead as the right toes turn to face the long edge of the mat. And then you lift up, like a, doing a little half cartwheel towards your warrior two. Adjust your feet. Make sure that you feel strong and stable here. Squeeze the heel of the front foot and the arch of the back foot towards the midline. Feel your inner thighs. And then left palm turns up and you fold to the back of the room. Reverse warrior. Soft top shoulders like you're drawing a big blanket, closing a big curtain over your head. Inhale to the center line. As you exhale, left arm to left thigh, or you can reach a little further, left hand towards the floor as you bring the right arm over your head. See where your body feels ready to go this morning, where you feel the energy building. This time we're going to come back up as we inhale, warrior two. As you exhale, straighten your front leg, bump your hips a little back, reach your left fingertips towards the shoulder edge of your mat and fold to triangle. Left hand to thigh, to calf. You could reach onto a prop or to the floor. Right fingertips reach up. And think about kind of stacking your right shoulder on top of your left shoulder so that your heart here is open. Again, your collarbones are really broad. There's so much space for your breath in your chest. Same, I'm gonna call it dismount, as in the extended side angle. You're gonna fold your right hand down towards the floor. Fingertips frame that left foot. Right foot turns to face the long edge of the mat, and you bring the right knee to the floor. We'll go back into our twisted lunge to the right hand can come to the mat and you twist over to your left. Shrug your shoulders back. If it feels comfortable at this point, you can always fold your right foot in. Reach around. Maybe you can hold on with your left hand, the opposite foot to hand. And this is one of those things that feels really good for some bodies and really not so good for other bodies. So this is totally optional. To me, it feels good. For many people, it does not. If it feels good to you, Go for it. If it doesn't, feel free to skip it. When you're ready, you unwind your twist. You're gonna rock your hips back. Now here you can step back to table as we did last time, or you can tuck your right toes under, reach your right knee up, and step straight back to downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward to plank, either sliding the hands and the shoulders forward or sliding the shoulders as I am over the wrists. Lower high push and exhale to the floor. If you're ready, you can pick up upward facing or you can stay with Cobra or Sphinx. And then as you exhale, a few breaths to play, downward dog, child, table, a repeat of that movement, that flow. See what feels just right for you. There's something that I haven't said. You know, like actually I just want to hang out in plank or lie flat on my belly. That is 100% okay. You know your own body, you're in your body right now. You are the best judge of what is great and right for your body. When you're ready, you're gonna come back to your table, back to your downward facing dog. From there, the left foot floats to the sky, and then the left foot steps up between the hands. Hands come to the inside of the left foot and you walk back to the long edge of the mat, back to your wide legged forward fold. Exhale, just relax into it, just kind of ugh, melt. Inhale, find halfway lift. And as you exhale, you walk back to the right. Right foot turns to the short edge of the mat. Left foot turns to the short edge of the mat. Right knee is over the right ankle. You could stay right here. This might feel like it's perfect for today. Drop your hips, lift your belly. Maybe you come a little higher, hands onto the thigh. Shrug your shoulders back, widen your collarbones. Maybe you add your wings. Reach back behind you. Press firmly into your right heel. 
you feel really quite strong, you can reach arms to the side, or even arms overhead. If you go arms overhead, just make sure there's no tension in your lower back here. Because that's a lot of weight bearing for your spine as you're leaning forward like this. Keep lifting your belly, keep softening your hips. So you're reaching back through that left heel towards the short edge of your mat behind you. As you're ready. The right hand comes to the outside of the right foot, the left arm sweeps forward, left toes face the long edge of the mat, and you smooth yourself, half cartwheel, all the way up. Warrior two, relax your shoulders, maybe the gaze can come over the front fingertips. And then your right palm flips up, and you fold back towards your left hand to thigh. And again, it's like you're drawing that big velvet curtain over your head. Relax into it. Inhale to the center line. Exhale, extended side angle, forearm to thigh, where you can go a little deeper, reaching the hand towards a prop or towards the floor on the inside of the front foot. It's not so important. Arm could reach overhead or left arm could reach straight up if that feels more comfortable. You can take your hand onto your hip if you want to. Press into your right heel. Lift back up. Warrior two. Straighten your right leg. Bump your hips back and fold triangle pose. Shrug your shoulders back and space. Make space. Don't space between your collarbones. Make space between your collarbones. Spend a few breaths here. Enjoy this deep, asymmetric stretch for your hips, sides of your body. Again, dismount is the same. You're going to fold towards the floor. Left hand comes to the inside of the right foot. Right hand comes to the outside. Left foot turns to face towards the right foot, and left knee comes towards the floor. You're going to enter your twist, so the left hand plants down, and you twist to your right towards your front knee. Shoulders shrug back. If you want to deliver your foot to your hand and find that bind, you are more than welcome to, but remember, it's completely unnecessary, unless it feels really good. It's one of those things that I find is a lot easier when your hips are really close to the floor. When my hips are really lifted and I'm here, it just feels like crap, to be honest, on my kneecap. I have to be able to get my hips open enough to be forward so that what's happening is I'm balancing on the front of my knee as opposed to the kind of ball of my kneecap, if you will. When you're ready, you're releasing. You come back. Hips rock back, hands plant down. You can step back to table or tucking the left toes, lifting the left knee, downward facing dog. Either way, slide your way forward to plank as you inhale. Exhale all the way to the floor. Cobra or sphinx or upward facing dog. Exhale your choice of where to go. You could spend some time holding your dog or your table, your plank, or your child's pose. Or you could flow a little more if you like. If you're ready, come back to your table or your downward facing dog. From there, your right foot will lift to the sky, and your right foot will step between your hands. Hands walk to the inside of the front foot. Left foot turns to the long edge. Right foot turns to the long edge. Fingertips are underneath the nose, and you find that wide-legged forward fold. We're going to spend a couple of breaths here this time. You could feel free to add on, maybe reaching your hands to hold onto your ankles. Or taking your arms behind your back, interlacing your fingers, or holding the wrists, stretching the shoulders. Releasing the hands underneath the nose, lift up again about halfway and start to walk to the left. The left foot turns to face the short edge, the right foot turns to face the short edge. And what you're going to do is plant your hands down, lift your left foot up and kind of tuck it behind you so you can set your left knee behind your left hand. We're going to pigeon pose. 
As usual, if you know a variation that feels just right, go ahead and find it. I'm going to start with this most traditional one and then I'll go through a few others. If this feels good, left knee is behind left hand. When those right toes tuck under, slide your right foot back, lie your right thigh down. And if that feels okay, you're welcome to stay upright today or to fold forward into your pigeon pose. Feel free to use props either underneath your hands or underneath your right buttock. I'll keep you here. If this doesn't feel quite right, you're welcome to take pinwheel sitting onto the outside edge of your right hip. Throw your left knee a little in so your legs are like a little pinwheel and maybe you fold towards the front of the mat here doesn't feel quite right either you're welcome to go onto your back and here if you go onto your back you're going to take your left ankle today over the top of your right knee maybe draw your right knee in towards your chest and then you find the place where you feel a nice stretch the outside of your left hip your left glutes this is targeting your IT band connectors T band is that band of fascia of tissue that runs on the outside of your thigh breaths here. All right, as you're ready, Going to make your way back to table or dog. If you're on your back, you want to kind of hug your knees into the chest, rock yourself to one side, and come back. If you're facing more forward or sitting on the outside of your hip, you're just going to place your hands down, tuck your back toe under, lift yourself up, and step back. Table or downward facing dog. Maybe take a moment, move your hips around. And this is all coming from the long edge of the mat. So again, you're going to lift your left foot from your table or dog to the sky and step your left foot up to the front of the mat. Walk your hands to the inside of the summer. You can walk all the way to the back. Right foot turns to face the short edge. Left foot turns to face the short edge. Plant your hands down. Lift your foot up and tuck your right knee behind your right hand. Again, if that traditional variation felt good, you can simply slide your foot back. Untuck your toes. You can stay lifted. It's a really nice stretch into the hip flexors and into the groin. Or you can fold forward, targeting a little more that outer right hip. And you can sit pinwheel outer edge of the right hip folding forward or you can come onto your back right ankle over the left knee and it's not important which one you choose it's important that the one you choose feels good to your body though feels like it's doing somewhat something beneficial in your hips and your outer legs more deep breaths here. When you're ready. From the floor, you're lifting up or from facing the floor, you're lifting up. If you're on your back, you'll rock a little side to side. You want to come back to your table or your downward facing dog. And you move around a little bit, any movements in the hips that feel nice. And we'll come back one last time to that long edge of the mat. The right foot floats up and then the right foot steps forward. Hands to the inside of the right foot. Walk to the long edge of your mat. Inhale, find half. Exhale, find forward fold for a few breaths. Feel free to move a little bit. When you're ready, inhale, find halfway lift. Press your fingertips down, heel toe. Or you can do a little hop, feet come in, and then bring yourself all the way to seated. As you come to seated, you're going to stretch your legs out wide. 
anything wider than the kind of narrow side of your mat is perfectly wide enough. If you have 90 degrees, you are welcome to go there. If this feels really intense, you can always sit up on a blanket or fold your mat a little bit behind you. And if that still feels really intense, there's just so much happening in your inner thighs or your lower back, you're welcome to take this pose with the soles of the feet together instead. So a lot of Kanasana, maybe even propping underneath the knees, we are going to fold forward. So know that that is always an option for you. This straddle or Ubuvi stick Kanasana is not an easy pose for most of our bodies. Bring your fingertips inside. If you have your feet together, you can bring your hands onto your feet if that feels good. Lift the center of your chest. And honestly, you might want to stay here, just focusing on broadening your collarbones. You could press your hands down by your hips to help get a little bit of lift, focusing on bringing your toes to face the ceiling. If you feel like you have a little more space, you could always walk forward. You can even bring your hands to props or your forearms to props or the floor. Some people can fold really far forward here. If you have that capability, you're more than welcome to do so. But again, focus on working in that place that feels really beneficial for your body, that feels like something good is happening. Got a couple more breaths here. so slowly and gently you're gonna walk your fingertips back in towards you roll your shoulders down use your hands to help you gather your legs in if you want place the soles of your feet onto the floor about hipish distance apart bring your hands behind you lift your chest again and then windshield wiper the legs a little side to side And then here you can sit cross-legged or you can extend the legs straight out in front of you. You can see what position feels more comfortable to your body. And then you're just going to bring your hands back behind your hips, angle your fingertips in any way that feels good. Squeeze your shoulder blades together and start to lift the center of your chest, coming into just a little baby camel pose. I actually don't know what a baby camel is called. Is it a calf? I'm going to have to look that up. As you come into your baby camel pose, you can extend the center of your chest forward, you can bring your head back. You're welcome to walk your hands further back behind you as you keep lifting the center of your chest, feeling a nice stretch through the front of your body here. When you're ready, you can softly begin to walk your hands back in, pull your belly button in Maybe roll your shoulders a few times, loosening things up. And then again, you're going to stretch if you don't already have them there, your legs in front of you. Cross your right foot to the outside of your left knee. We're going to go for a shoelace pose here. And this is again a little bit of work into your outer hips. So if you feel quite a lot of stretch in your outer hips, you might stay right here again and you can sit onto a blanket. If you want to go a little further, you lift that left foot up and you start to guide your left knee down towards your right hand. Excuse me, I'm totally on the wrong side. You're riding your right knee down towards your left knee. I'm even doing the same side as you. All right, so this top knee, right knee most likely, is stacking towards the bottom knee. If you're on the other side, don't worry, we're just going to switch. And what you want to do here is see, okay, how do my hips feel? Is there a lot of tension? Maybe I stay here, maybe just like the Ubu Vista, I even lean back. If it feels good, maybe you lean forward. For those of you who have been working in your Gomakasana, you're welcome to go a little further and fold your bottom foot. That would most likely be your left foot in. So you're sitting with these little ears to your cow's long face. And again, there you can lean back. You could potentially lean forward. Like Uba Vista, this is not an easy pose for the majority of bodies. So many of us aren't going to fold forward or we're going to fold forward very minimally. There are people who this is their area of flexibility. They can go really close. They can bring their forearms to the floor. 
head sweep, go for it. My outer hips tend to be on the tighter side, so this is about my maximum this morning. I can really feel the energy of my hips. I'm trying to move a little, trying to change position if you need to. You can use your hands to help you unwind your legs if you like. And you might go back to your windshield wipers, soles of the feet on the floor, and be going a few times side to side. And when you're ready, you can bring the legs back out in front of you. This time the left foot is going to cross over to the outside of the right knee. Now, again, you can stay right here. This in itself is a little stretch for your IT band, your outer hips. But you could go further, taking the left knee now. I think I'm actually telling you the correct side. The left knee towards the right knee, the top towards the bottom. And that might feel quite intense. And it doesn't matter if you get to that point of stacking. You can even put props, blankets, or blocks between the knees to help hold you if you're in kind of an intermediate position between the knee facing upright and the knee stacking. If that feels really intense, lean back. That releases the pressure. You're not taking these muscles and lengthening them. Now you're allowing them to kind of be a little bit more relaxed. If you want to lengthen them, you fold forward, you hinge at the hips, and let those muscles start to stretch a little more. And you can stay right here. This is your shoelace. Looks like you're learning to tie your shoes. Or you could go to that Gomukhasana if you've been working there. You have that hip flexibility. You could fold your bottom foot in. Same deal applies here. You can use props. You can either not fold forward or fold forward. Be totally honest with yourself. And this is one of the benefits of being at home. Nobody can see you. You can do whatever you need to do. And if it looks silly and you feel silly, I mean, who cares? Maybe your cat sees you or your dog. They don't care. They do silly things all the time. here if you can. Feel that energy in your hips. Feel the work. And when you're ready, you can kind of lock yourself back. Roll your shoulders away from your ears. You can use your hands on your legs if you need to. You can go back to windshield wipers or you can extend the legs out, make the feet a little wide and wiggle your feet back and forth. Try and keep your thighs, if you try this, I call this jello, really soft so that as you're wiggling your feet, your thigh muscles start to feel jello-esque and they just wobble a little back and forth. So what you're doing is you're gliding the muscles over and around their mates, their neighbors, but also over and around the tissues that surround them, the fascia, so that you're getting kind of this really nice shaken up sensation. It's like when all the sediment sinks to the bottom of the orange juice, now you're blending it up, getting all the stuff back together. When you're ready, you can stop and you can just feel. Oh yeah, there's like little bubbles all up and down in there. Now you can finally again face the short edge of your mat. Make sure you're right in the middle. And lie yourself all the way down. As you come to lie on the floor, draw the soles of your feet in. Again, take your feet a little wider than your hips. Arms can come out to the side. And sway your knees a few times from right to left. And you finish off with a gentle twist here. And the next time that your knees happen to come to the right, go ahead and let them stay there. Find the twist. This might feel right. You might like to take your right ankle and stack it over the top of your left knee. If that feels good, you can stay. You might like to stack your knees and draw them in closer towards you. Or extend your legs. Allow yourself to do what feels just right in your body. So find a variation of the twist again. 
feels good. And at this point, the energy that you want to feel is kind of a nice, quiet, steady energy. So as you're coming into this twist, it's not that you're holding and gripping. It's not a heat building type of energy. It's the kind of energy that is sustainable. That quick burn energy, that holding energy, that heat building in the muscles. When you're ready, bring your knees back to the center and take them to the other side. This is the kind of, you had whole grain cereal with fruit and peanut butter for breakfast. You just have energy for hours and hours. It's stable, it's steady. You could stack the left ankle on the right knee if you want. It's the kind of energy that carries you through the day feeling good and strong. Feel free to adjust your twist on this side as well to suit your body. And when you're ready, you can bring your knees back to center like to hug them into your chest. You might like to turn the soles of your feet to the sky for happy baby. Just releasing the lower back. And then as you're ready, it's time for Shavasana. If there's anything else you need first, you are as usual welcome to add that in before making your way to the most comfortable most restful, most sustainable place, steady place for your body this morning. If you have the time, I encourage you to stay 
in your Shavasana. If you're ready to move on with your day, take a deep breath in. And a nice relaxing sigh out. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. And make your way over to one side to rest for a few breaths. comfortable seat this morning. Your hands as you arrive in your seat and come in front of your heart. All ten fingertips pressing together, heels of the hands pressing together. And we'll close with our deep breath together in through nose, out through mouth, on three. One, Two, three. <sighs> Namaste. Thank you so much for sharing your practice and your time with me. Have a wonderful rest of your day.